we're looking in uh, some fields comparing uh, tillage systems to a CRP system, see if there's any difference in the soil. Uh, the CRP system, if you look over that way, you can see the pickup truck. We'll be able to go into the CRP on that side and look right straight back. So we kind of know uh, that this is just across the road from that other field. So it's the same soil. Uh, this soil has been tilled uh, conventionally for a lot of years. Uh, 20, maybe 50, maybe more than 50, but a lot of years. And uh, you can see th what happens when you do a lot of tillage. So some of the effects uh, that tillage does on the, on the soil, if you look, uh, you can see the, how it's become cloddy. That's just like making adobe bricks. When you mix the mud to make a brick, that's, what, what, that's some of the things you do with, uh, with tillage. So you can see there's big clods out through this field on the surface. Uh, they're hard to plant into. It's hard to get good so seed to soil contact unless you're able to uh, break those clods up and, uh, with, your, with your planting equipment. So that's kind of a, a problem that you get. Another is, since that soil is pulverized, uh, you get some of it that, that it turns to fines. It, it, it is not a, uh, attached to a soil uh, pad or, or a granule at all. It's just a single grain fines. And when you get those, they have a tendency to seal the surface of the soil so that the, uh, the uh, rainfall just doesn't go in, doesn't penetrate very well. Uh, right where we're standing, you can see uh, some of this evidence of water running down these little furrows didn't soak in because those fines had sealed off the surface of the soil. So even though it's a little counterintuitive to say, well, uh, a, a soil that's never been tilled absorbs water better, but that's the fact. That, that's the way it is. So this soil, that's, even though it's been loosened up, you'd think that it would be able to take water better it doesn't because it's been sealed off. Those fines have sealed off the surface of the soil. So I'm uh, digging down. What I'm hoping to get through is, <coughs> is down through the tillage layer. So this is, this is a profile of the soil. Uh, you can see uh, this is some of the residue that was incorporated when they did the tillage. There's a break point right here where the, where the soil just naturally broke for some reason. So if we take this section off, you can see that that's a flat area, just, like, just as flat as a pan. We call that a tillage pan. And it's, it's what's formed when the tillage implements are dragged underneath and they pack this down uh, that compacts the uh, that compacts the soil makes it so the water doesn't penetrate as well and the roots had a hard time going through too so there's a little zone here that the roots have a tough time penetrating they eventually do but it's easier to stay up above it and you can see here there's another compacted layer and in natural soil, these compacted layers just aren't there. This is something that's come from tillage, these different layers. The natural structure of this soil is down here where uh, the tillage has never really got down this far. I don't, I don't imagine it has anyway. Uh, and you'll notice here that the structure is granular. There's little crumbs of soil that might be, that's good structure. And these little crumbs let the water come, come in down between them. They've gotten uh, much more open than these areas that have been compacted with tillage. So this is what we want to have. If, if we could choose the kind of structure we want in a soil, this is what we want to have, not this. Another thing that happens with uh, a lot of tillage is each time you till it, it, redu it reduces the amount of organic matter that's there. 
And that's something that we really is really tough to see. Uh, we can maybe go by the color of the soil. Darker soils means that there, there's more organic matter there. Lighter soils are showing that it's just more mineral stuff. Uh, the organic matter is a reserv reservoir for nutrients. Uh, it's a very important uh, slow release through the year as the organic matter decomposes, it releases the nutrients to the plants and makes it so they can uh, have a steady supply of nutrients as they grow. Otherwise, if you've got a soil that's been tilled a lot, you put the nutrients on, they're available for the plant, but uh, uh, as the year progresses and as the nutrients leach through the soil, they're gone uh, towards the end of the season. That gives you lower quality wheat, lower protein levels, and, and just a poor, uh, worse overall production. Okay, this is a CRP field that has been seeded to safflower. You can see the drill rows uh, of the no-till drill when it came through uh, as it planted the seed. The, the thing that is important to look at is this is a lot like a natural system. It's not quite, but it's been in CRP for a lot of years. I can tell it's been in CRP for a lot of years because I can see that a good established grass stand and there's lots of thatch. Uh, this thatch um, is, uh, protects the soil uh, from, from raindrop impact. It makes the soil uh, more open, so it absorbs water better. Uh, and it also releases nutrients, uh, like in a, in a tea that drips down into the soil and makes those nutrients available to whatever is growing. So in this system right here in CRP, as that thatch is decomposing, it feeds the grass that takes it back up. So the nutrients are cycled within just a foot or so of, the, of where they were uh, to, to begin with. Other things to see on this uh, kind of situation uh, with CRP, you can see a little bit of moss uh, that's on the surface of the soil. Uh, that moss doesn't show up for a lot of years, and so this stuff has been around for a long time. I don't, I don't know if you can see, there's, there's ants that are, and flies, uh, there's a, a bunch of insects that are in this system. Uh, that's saying it's a live living system uh, that uh, is cycling nutrients and has a lot of life here in this soil and on this land. Now, this CRP uh, is going to go back into crop production now. And so these th uh, this thatch is something that we want to maintain because we don't want to have these nutrients all released the first year and then be gone. We want them to cycle and just keep cycling as it goes on forever. So the thatch is a good thing. We don't want to destroy it. Uh, when these, these, uh, this grass has been sprayed, and so it's, uh, it's, it doesn't know it yet, but it's dead. Uh, and uh, it will add to that thatch as it con continues to die and decompose. So now we'll uh, take a look at the soil. Okay, now the one thing, uh, comparing this to the, the soil across the way, you don't see clods. Of course, uh, they've melted down over the years, but the, there's nothing on the surface that even looks like clods. Uh, so this is actually a, a pretty good seed bed with the proper seeding equipment. Now, as I, as I pushed this shovel into the ground, uh, overall there was, there was more resistance than there was in the top few inches over there. But, as I went all the way in, there was less resistance as I went through what over there would have been the compacted layer. Then, older soils like this have more soil strength because they've built up 
the amount of organic matter, those peds that we talked about are stronger and there's more of them. So soils like this uh, could be planted in a whole lot wetter conditions than over there. It's not going to get muddy, it's not going to compact, it has more bearing strength for equipment to go across it. So that's an advantage of no-till. Okay, that's what we've got to work with. Now, I'm looking down where I think the plow pan or tillage pan would have been. This, this soil was uh, formed years ago. What I'm, I'm not seeing those plates or those breaks that you saw in the other soil. And the structure is crumbly with these small granules, good strong peds. There's no barrier for the roots to go down. As these roots uh, die and decompose, they create a channel, and the water can follow right down that channel uh, after the roots decompose. So these soils are more open. They'll absorb water better. Down in the very bottom, uh, you can see a little bit of lighter colored soils below where the organic matter is. This soil is darker colored than across the way because it has more organic matter in it. But notice how, how soft and crumbly it is compared to, to that soil. Initially, it was harder for me to put that shovel in because it has more strength. It's more open, more fertile because the organic matter is slowly decomposing, spoon feeding these nutrients to their crop, uh, as opposed to when you apply nutrients in a conventional system, the nutrients are available all at once and then they're gone. So this is a better system. One of the advantages of a no-till drill is uh, that it does very little disturbance to the surface. And so this thatch can stay, not not be forced to decompose too fast. Here's the slot that the seeds have been placed in. The seeds were placed and a little packer wheel came along behind and just firmed it in uh, nice and gently so the seeds are in a perfect spot to grow. No-till drill, a good one, uh, does that. The least disturbance that you can do is the very best.